Tonight on Newswire LA, have you ever wondered what goes on at those election night parties you see on TV? Well, we're taking you to the parties being held by the candidates for Los Angeles County District Attorney. We'll show you the party atmosphere. We'll bring you the interviews with the candidates and their supporters. When we're done, we'll tell you who the real winner was on this night. Stay tuned for all of that and more right here on Newswire LA, right after this. It's November 6, 2012, and here we are coming to you from the 21st floor in the fashionable Elevate Lounge here in downtown Los Angeles. What you see here is a gathering of friends, family, and supporters of prosecutor and district attorney candidate Alan Jackson. Two years of constant campaigning have come down to this night. It's approximately 7.30 p.m. on election night, so the polls haven't closed and actually won't for another half hour. Therefore, the returns won't start flowing in for at least an hour after that. In the meantime, the attendees at this event and the one taking place about a mile east for Jackson's opponent, Jackie Lacey, are busying themselves with socializing, eating, drinking, and showing their overall support for their candidate. Alan Jackson as well is working the floor while giving interviews to the various media who are holding watch with him. Newswire LA is on scene as well with a team led by Jamie Wright. We'll be bringing you images and interviews with the candidates and their supporters. Let's go to Newswire LA's political analyst, Jamie Wright, who's standing by with Alan Jackson supporter, John Butcher. This is Jamie Wright with Newswire LA, and we are here at the Alan Jackson Election Night Victory Party. I am here with John Butcher, an early supporter of the Alan Jackson campaign. John, thank you for talk talking to us this evening. Thank you. If you can just tell us, I know you've probably said it at nausea at this point, but why you came on as an Alan Jackson supporter. You know, Jackson, uh, Alan Jackson uh, did things for the, uh, for the uh, prosecutor's office. That, that needed to be done at a time when the prosecutor's office was really down. You know, I think if you remember back to the early 90s, mid 90s, the prosecutor's office had lost a lot of high profile cases. Uh, they were not, I think, held in high regard by the public. Allen came on board and, and prosecuted a number of the high profile cases, as well as a lot of lower profile cases uh, that really restored confidence in the department. And he was one of the leaders in doing that. He was one of the key figures in, in really uh, uh, bringing public trust back to the prosecutor's office. And that, that's what I saw in him as a special kind of candidate. And so right now we're hearing that, you know, with exit polls and with the ballot so far, that the gap is closing. So there's going to be um, a small margin between the two candidates. If you could describe or use some adjectives to tell us what the difference would be in a person that votes for Jackie Lacey versus Alan Jackson, that would be great. You know, I think... Jackie Lacey's a fine candidate, but her, her, her background really over the, in recent years has been more of an administrative capacity. And I think what the voters are looking for is a man of action like Alan Jackson, uh, a, a guy who has been out there, been on the front lines, prosecuted uh, um, very high profile cases, again, as, very, as well as very low profile cases uh, over the years successfully. He's had a tremendous success rate. He knows what it takes to win, and I think what the people of LA are looking for is someone that's going to protect them by winning the, the important cases for them. Well, thank you, John, for your feedback, and good luck with the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. In order to keep everyone abreast of the night's election results, the campaign had several big screen monitors put up and set to broadcast coverage. Since the local election results were still TBA, 
Attendees watched the national races, which included the hotly contested presidential race between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. Shockingly, after being assured of a race that would not be resolved in one night, we were all treated to a race that was over almost three and a half hours after the polls closed in the East. Incumbent President Barack Obama had defeated Mitt Romney handily. On the screen you see that Obama has more than the 270 delegates needed for re-election. Allen took to the stage to give us what would be periodic updates over the course of the evening. Let's listen in. Thank you, thank you, Rocky. This is the first of many updates throughout the evening. Uh, I, I can't thank everybody enough for coming. I can't thank everybody enough uh, for the support that you've shown me, for the support that you've shown the campaign. Uh, this is going to be a, a, an interesting night. I've just been told, I was, it was whispered in my ear, that some results have come out, but it's uh, sort of a blip on the radar. About 300,000 votes have been counted so far. They're all absentee. No, vote, uh, no poll votes have been counted. Uh, Jackie Lacey is ahead by a few points. It represents about 40,000 votes out of uh, probably 3 million or 3.5 million that are going to be cast tonight. And keep in mind that we did all of our, has anybody here ever see the ad that we're in? Yeah! That ad was running specifically for poll voters, not for absentee voters. All our ad didn't start running until after the, the absentees had already, uh, had already dropped, and that was by design. We expect to win this race through the poll vote. Uh, which isn't, it, literally, they're driving those back to, uh, to Norwalk as we speak. We're not going to hear about those uh, until the, light, the, the night is a, a little bit uh, longer lasting, as it were. Uh, so I want everybody to stick around. It's going to be a great night. Uh, those numbers are going to change very, very quickly. And every time they do change, we'll give you another update. But in the meantime, have fun, eat, drink, be merry, have a good time, and let's celebrate. As the crowds continued their vigil, let's go back down to the floor and Newswire's Jamie Wright, who's with Alan Jackson supporter Eric Lakin. I am here with Eric Lincoln of the Lincoln Club, correct? Well, I am of the Lincoln Club. I am Eric Lakin, yes. No relation to the great president, our first Republican president. So tell me, um, I know you've talked about it already. But can you just give our viewers a glimpse into why you came on as an Alan Jackson supporter? Alan, for me, exemplified what Americans really want historically in a politician. It's really the anti-politician. An individual who is passionate about what they do, who's good at what they do, who puts the public interest front and center, and who's willing to go to the mat to ensure that the public interest is protected. I was very impressed with Allen's handling of the Phil Spector case, the first time in 40 years that a Los Angeles prosecutor has won a significant conviction against a celebrity. We are in LA and I'm an old LA guy, family's been here since the 1800s, I respect what this city produces, but those that stray need to be held accountable. And Alan Jackson was able to do that in the city in which there were tremendous forces and pressure against such a conviction. So Alan seems to be, to me, one of us, okay. a man of the people, and understands what it takes to connect with this constituency. He is not a, a, a bureaucrat. He is not a career politician. He's somebody who fervently believes in what he does, he does the best he can, and he wants to even do better for you and me. And look, as a Los Angeles resident, somebody who has two little children and a, a third on the way, and who does not intend to leave Los Angeles, no matter what they do to my taxes, I want a prosecutor who is going to take our crime seriously, enforce our laws, and ensure the success of this great city and this great state. So what do you think the changes that will be made if Allen comes into office versus the changes that will be made if Jackie Lacey becomes the DA? Look, I am not in the DA's office. I am not privy to all the political machinations that go on there, but I can only guess. Jackie Lacey, I'm certain, is a qualified and competent individual. 
I do understand, however, that she has primarily been an administrator in her role for the last decade or so, whereas Mr. Jackson has been a prosecutor. I kind of want a prosecutor who's going to be on the beat. If it was a policeman, I'd want a policeman who knows how to shoot. I don't want an administrator. I want somebody who understands the issues and who understands the courtroom and who's prepared to enforce the laws. There's plenty of room for great administrators, and I think administration uh, of, of the DA's office is key and critical. Look, the, administra uh, the, the DA's office is, the, I believe, one of the largest law enforcement agencies in the United States. So administration is key. But at the forefront, the tip of the spear, what is that going to be? I think the tip of the spear ought to be a prosecutor who's not afraid and who will not back away from the tough prosecutions. Well, thank you, Mr. Lincoln, My and pleasure. enjoy the rest of your night. My pleasure, and I hope you have a wonderful evening, thank a you. great election night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. The Alan Jackson campaign went through a lot of pains to make sure their supporters had a great time while they waited for the election returns to come in. We were approached by magician Steve Owens, who is seen here with our Trisha Mitchell. His first trick was to make smoke come out of the Newswire LA camera. The camera crew was highly unamused. Just kidding, we actually enjoyed that trick very much. Nevertheless, Steve, who can be normally found at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, did some other tricks for Trisha's enjoyment. We apologize for the audio, but being that magic is made for the eyes, you should be able to enjoy what you see taking place. Now that's some cool smoke and fire, mainly because it doesn't involve one of our Newswire LA cameras. Again, Steve would love it if you paid him a visit. You can find him at the Magic Castle up in Hollywood. Now that we're done having fun, let's find our Jamie Wright who's actually doing some work. She's standing by with Alan Jackson supporter, Edward Losey. Jamie? Another Alan Jackson supporter. Again, we're here at the Alan Jackson victory party. November 6th, election day, 2012. There's so much going on. Edward, thank you for stopping to talk to us. No problem. So, you know, give us a little bit about your background and how you came to be a supporter of Alan Jackson. Well, um, my communications firm was involved with the Phil Spector murder trial. And uh, Lana Clarkson, who Phil Spector murdered, was a former client of ours. And uh, we established a group called the Friends of Lana Clarkson. And we were there to protect the image of Lana Clarkson from, and make sure the media got it right on who she was. And we supported Alan every day in the trial, both trials. We were there in the courtroom every day watching him, his amazing work. And to be up against a bullying and unethical law firms that were doing everything that six to seven million dollars could afford because that's what Phil Spector paid out in legal fees. He overcame that. Two years of, of being in the courtroom and he got the conviction. And, you know, uh, he's our God when it comes to that. You know, he's like Perry Mason. He's, you know, a young Perry Mason and reincarnated. And he's not part of the good old boy system here. And, you know, uh, I feel safe knowing that the gangs tonight, the gangs, the gang members, you guys who are watching tonight, they're watching TV. They're not watching porno flicks tonight. They're watching TV because they're going to be scared to death of Alan Jackson becomes district attorney because he's anti-gang like you've never. So that's why as, as well. Yeah. And, you know, if you had any thoughts about you know, one word that would describe the difference between Alan Jackson and his opponent, uh, Jackie Lacey, what would, what would the word be? Character. Yeah. It's character. It's what you do when nobody's watching. And that's Alan Jackson, you know. 
Well, yeah. thank you, Edward. Oh, glad, glad good to talk to you. For talking to us, and okay. have a good rest of the night. Okay, thank you. Thank you. As the night marched on, Alan came out and gave a couple of additional updates. His updates were usually prefaced by speeches from supporters, including the sister of Mickey and Trudy Thompson. Alan Jackson had been successful in prosecuting the man who killed them both almost two decades earlier. But the fact of the matter was that in the early returns, Alan was trailing Jackie Lacey by several thousand votes. Alan, however, was confident that the tide would shift in his favor. He cited that the votes counted were coming from the absentee ballot pool, and with his strong media presence on the local broadcast television market over the past three to four weeks leading up to this night, he should be able to turn the election in his favor. We did notice that Alan's mood and that of his team had shifted into a more conservative and guarded mode. His interviews with the media were fewer and shorter in duration. The time was approaching 10 p.m. and the Newswire LA team was going to make its first major move of the night and head a few blocks northeast to the Jackie Lacey party. Come and join us. We'll be there in a flash. Newswire LA's just arrived at the Jackie Lacey election night party, which is being held at Union Station in downtown Los Angeles. The mood is very festive on this night, as Miss Lacey also knows that she's ahead of Alan Jackson by several thousand votes in the vote pool. The fact that she's ahead is a wonder, being that she never invested a single dime in broadcast advertising. She relied on a grassroots campaign of getting out and meeting the people. She also had at least two famous supporters, P. Diddy and actor Jamie Foxx, who tweeted on her behalf to their Los Angeles followers. By invitation, a few weeks before the election, Newswire LA followed Jackie Lacey and her campaign team out into the community as she made a final push to get out the vote. Our Trisha Mitchell joined Jackie Lacey at Tolliver's Barbershop on Florence Avenue in South Los Angeles. It is true that the barbershop is the center of meeting and political discourse in the black community. And Tolliver's is one of the most famous in the Los Angeles area. Lawrence Tolliver's presided over discussions in his shop ranging from the Los Angeles riots to the O.J. Simpson case to the election and re-election of Barack Obama. However, Tolliver and his customers aren't just debating to themselves. They've always had the ear of the media who's come to know this place fairly well. And there are the many candidates who've also come by here looking to win their hearts and their votes. Today it's Jackie Lacey who's come to Tolliver's. Let's listen in. Brian Temple. You got three passes, but one's one behind you. You go there to that church and speak. James, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And who's the other pastor? Pastor Saul. Also joining Jackie on this final push is her mother. The telephone. You're probably here. You're on the telephone. Okay. Totally. Then you good. missed two behind you after these, these two gentlemen. You have a square floor. All right. Thank you. And yeah, I'm going to ask Prayer is really what's gotten me through this far. Uh, I've never run for office in my life, and this has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I've raised two children, I've been married 32 years to uh, the guy I dated in high school. And uh, I've worked a lot of challenges, but I must say that 24 months of uh, being out there and having to uh, travel all over the county mm. from Antelope Valley, people don't even realize where LA County is, it's from Antelope right. Valley to Malibu, mm. down to Long Beach to Norwalk, and everybody is interested in the same thing. They're interested in their communities remaining safe, they're interested in a fair justice system, and they want to know what's in it for them, why should they care? 
And uh, the fact that our campaign is doing so well, I mean, my manager, she's she's not a pol she's not in the political world at all. She's an attorney. She took my uh, campaign over, and uh, we ended up with 32 percent of the vote, uh, which was a shocker. On Would this last push be enough? We'll have to wait and see. Let's get back to Jackie's election night party at Union Station in downtown Los Angeles. Back at Union Station, Jackie's mingling with the crowd and giving only a limited number of in-depth interviews. Newswire LA was proud to learn that we were on that very short list. So let's get right back to our Jamie Wright, who's with Jackie Lacey. Newswire LA at the historic downtown Union Station with Jackie Lacey at her election night victory party. Pleasure to see you again. It's great to see you again, Jamie, and under these circumstances, <laughs> so it's wonderful. You are currently the presumptive winner of this race. How does it feel right now? Well, um, we're still not ready to call it. Uh, we're only got 20% of the vote in. We're talking about, uh, you know, 2 million voters, so we still have a lot to count. But our team from the get-go, even before the polls were closed, we felt very confident. We ran a positive campaign. We didn't do any of the mudslinging. We always felt that if we continue to just talk about the issues, three strikes, uh, the death penalty, all these issues, and talked about my qualifications, that the voters would get the memo. Yep. And they did. they did. Yeah. And if there was one adjective that you could describe your campaign and what you think will set aside you versus your opponent this evening, if there is a, is a win, what would it be? I think we had, um, I think we had better judgment. Okay. Okay. I really do. I think that, uh, you know, the team that I had, uh, they were professional, they were smart. We had uh, four lawyers on the team, uh, and uh, there were some people who had been in campaigns for a long time, some people who hadn't. This was my first campaign, and I think that we really put our heads together, and every challenge, every issue, we made the right call. And so what does one do after they win a campaign? Well, the first thing is, is you try to get a couple hours sleep, <laughs> And I intend to be in work tomorrow and really start to think about some decisions that I need to make. Uh, all leaders, okay. and I'm no different, uh, need to surround themselves with the right people, the right team in order to execute their plan. And so I have ideas about people I want to talk to, people I want to get in place early on, so that December 3rd when I'm sworn in at 11.59 p.m., we're ready to roll. All right. Or a.m., 11.59 a.m. Well, good luck the rest of Thank this you, evening. Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. It's, it's nice evening. to see you. And now the night's winding down. Let's go to the stage where Jackie is about to address her supporters. So uh, I want to thank you for coming. We're getting thrown out of Union Station. It's late, but uh, we'll be back uh, for a press conference in the morning. Thank you so much for hanging in there so late. I want to dedicate this night to the first leader in my life, my father, Louis Phillips, Jr. I was hoping to do that when the victory came, but I'm doing it tonight. I don't want to leave without uh, dedicating this night to him. But we've got to get home because we need to get up in the morning. We've got interviews in the morning. So I want to thank you. And, um, you know, I think if I leave one word with you, it's believe. Thank you. As the midnight hour approached, no clear winner was named, but Miss Lacey was still out in front, which was a good sign. But stand by for the results, which were certified the very next day. After two years of intense campaigning, it's come down to this. Here are the final results in the race for County of Los Angeles District Attorney. On November 6, 2012, the electorate cast ballots as follows. Alan Jackson, Los Angeles County Prosecutor. Total votes of 911,345. Percentage of votes cast, 45.01%. Jackie Lacey, Chief Deputy District Attorney of Los Angeles County. Total votes of 1,113,455. Percentage of votes cast, 54.99%. This makes Jackie Lacey the next District Attorney of Los Angeles County. This is a historic vote also because Miss Lacey is the first African American and woman to sit in this office. 
After a long night, Alan Jackson conceded the race just after 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. I think it's safe to say that it was a hard defeat for a candidate who essentially ran a campaign by the book, especially when it came to campaign advertising. On the other hand, Jackie Lacey ran a campaign that defied all odds. The only thing left was to be sworn in as the District Attorney of Los Angeles County, and that took place on December 3rd, 2012, at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It was our pleasure to bring you this coverage. And remember, for everything Newswire LA, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Newswire LA. We'll see you back here next time, and good night. Stay tuned for more news on this Westlake Signal Station. Hi, and welcome to Newswire LA. I'm your host, Chin Thomas Angsi. Today we're coming to you from Central Avenue and 43rd Street at the historic Dunbar Hotel. You can see the hotel just over my shoulder. Well, what you may not be aware is that the hotel and the rest of this block, including the Somerville One, and Somerville Two Place Apartments are going through a major redo. This area behind me is going to become Dunbar Village and it's going to be a haven for seniors and people who need low income housing. So we're going to take a look inside of the hotel today and we're going to speak to the people behind this project. Yes, it's exactly what you think. This is the theme to the series Chips. Chips would run on the network for six seasons and 139 episodes. Like Emergency and Adam-12 before it, the show would spawn a legion of fans. Built around the adventures of CHP officers John Baker and Frank Poncherello, Chips was a different kind of cop show, incorporating music, pop culture, and the glamorous Southern California lifestyle into their storylines. 35 years after that night's airing of the pilot, most of the series' cast have gathered here at the airport Hilton in Los Angeles.